Hello and welcome to today's episode of the Castalog. As always, this is me, Mostrino. Uh, this is my voice. Hello, I am Geeky. Hey everyone, Kovac here. I really need to get something off my chest. On December 3rd, 2019, something amazing happened to this community. Just a gent released one of his best EPs, one of the best EPs of all time. This album included the legendary song Iris in the Dark. When this song was uploaded to the Instinct channel, I was filled with joy. It was a happiness I'd never felt in my life before. It is now the best song released this year on Monster Cat and easily an all-time favorite. Fast forward a few months later and the IV5 tracklist is released. I I happily opened my computer and scrolled through the list. At first, I was confused. Where is just a gent? I asked myself. I assumed I had just scrolled past on accident. I looked again and started to worry. That day, I looked through the track list at least 10 times, hoping it would showcase those sacred, wor sacred words, but to no avail. Tears started forming in my eyes. How could they? How could they include four Coven songs, two Cloud Nun songs from the same EP, and countless other songs that didn't even approach the quality of Iris in the Dark while excluding it? I'm fucking done. I've already packed my bags and I'm ready to just leave. I am going to take a train to a city far, far away and start a new life, all while blasting Iris in the Dark through my Apple earbuds. I will keep you all updated on my journey. Thank you for reading and fuck whoever decided to exclude this song from the cop. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Cola. That was long, holy shit. Mm -hmm. Oh, and I haven't shaved my genitals in five months. I'm Liz. Thank that you, Liz. That is pretty fire. Um, this is my voice, and I am Miko. <laughs> awesome. Welcome, Miko and Geeky to, to, to oh, your first me. ever cast along. Alright, starting out as always, with the releases of the past week. First one being the new Justin O and Nitro Fun collab, Kill Switch. I thought that this was definitely a, a mid-tempo space bass whatever track. The first drop was very uh, reminiscent of, he has us pronounce it 1788L, but it's so much easier to just say 1788L. And then the yeah, second drop, it was way more like res-like, but oh, overall, I. I mean, I kind of enjoyed it, but I don't think that their styles really shown in through in the way that I was hoping for. Cause like this really could have been a great blend of their styles, but it really seemed more so like they were trying to imitate other people's styles, unfortunately. Yeah, I think mostly like for this song, I should hate this because it is like every mid-tempo cliche to exist. But they're but instead of just repeating one cliche over and over, it's all of them combined, which hmm. somehow makes it better. But anyways, uh, like, yeah, it, the instrumentation is generic, but at least it, like, changes itself up decently. Um, the, all the effects put on the, like, the spoken word in the middle of, in the middle of the track is really, really cool, especially near the end of it. Yeah, it's just, it's, it's, it should be, like, absolutely terrible, but I like it. Maybe it's just just a no bias, I don't know. Alright, I definitely agree that, like, you can't really hear too much of, like, even Justin O and Nitro Fun in there, there was like one part in like the second <clears throat> drop where um, we did get some 8-bit sounds kind mm -hmm. of towards the latter half. But other than that, I couldn't really hear either of their influence on the song. And then from there, it's just pretty standard mid-tempo, which... Eh... I completely agree with what you said. Like, I enjoy the song, but at the same time, you don't really get to hear Nitro Fun at all until at the very end. But, I mean, I enjoyed it, so it was all right. Um, I think that the lack of presence of both of them is a good thing. Because if you told me, like, a while ago <coughs> that Justin O and Nitro Fun were going to make a, a collab together, I would have bet dollars to donuts that it would have been shitty pro step. And I'm... I'm very glad that it's not. Like, it doesn't even sound like either of them, and I'm, I'm appreciative of that because Justin O is, has one playlist ad, Nitro Fun hasn't made a good song since 2016. I think that having them do something that's clearly very outside of their normal range uh, was was good for me as a listener because I'm tired of both of them and uh, yeah I think it's it's generic but it's good I enjoy it all right and then the next track on here 
the Bose and Ghost collab, Half a Heart, featuring Amanda Sings. Now, I don't, I don't necessarily think that this is the uh, general opinion, but I do enjoy it. I don't think it's that great, but I do find it to be all right. It's it's very very basic, but yeah, I, I mean, I, I still I still do enjoy it, but definitely not necessarily a standout, if you ask me. This this song has a vocal chop, one vocal chop. And it's got piano at the end, and that's like it. There's really nothing really to this song. I don't know, it's just meh. Guitar at the end is nice though. Yeah, going into it, I already didn't like the Bose remix of Play. It was like one of my least favorites on the Play remix album. So I didn't have high hopes going into it, and it's just awfully generic to me. Like the drop starts off with the kick drum, and then after four bars go on, he adds the the snare or the clap or whatever, and then another four bar goes on, and he has the hi hat. It was just predictable. I don't know. I didn't. I didn't like him that that much. Um, I mean, starting off on my first listen, I also didn't particularly enjoy the vocals on it. I thought that they were like just a bit low tier. But um, at the drop, I actually did kind. I don't know. I kind of like vocal wailing, so like that kind of throughout the drop makes it slightly more enjoyable to me. But like other than that, it's just like really standard house stuff that I can't get into. So I'll just skip on this one whenever it comes um, up. Bose is one of the very, very few cases of EDM artists that I was able to discover and get into outside of Monster Cat. Like really ever um and so i know that they're capable of making good music they've made plenty of good songs uh, although their style is generally very generic they've made plenty of songs that i enjoy particularly um and that makes it even sadder for me to listen to something like this where i i feel like there's a good song there but it's hidden you know it's the whole thing is is flat it's like it's like the pancake of music i need to and there needs to be some sort of progression it doesn't go anywhere and also you know irma gerd it's amanda sings which is the which is the weirdest i don't i don't know that Reminds sounds like of, uh, one like miranda sings like <laughs> evil twins or something <laughs> It reminds me of one song by uh, Modus that had featured uh, a vocalist called Austin Vocals, and it turns out his real last name was Vocals. Damn. <laughs> Bro, oh yeah. Oh. I think Bose could have made a, easily could have made a good song, but they made something that I, like even I, a Bose supporter, can't defend. Uh, I can't get behind this song fragment. All right. Then moving on to uh, the big item for today, from the past week they dropped the entire compilation of Instinct Volume 6 featuring Half a Heart, that one's on there. So what I figured we'd do, uh, obviously it's 40 track song, we would not have enough time to go through all 40 tracks. So we can just go over our favorites, our least favorites, you know, highlights and lowlights, overall thoughts and anything else you want to mention. Uh, I'll start out. The I only gave two songs on here a nine. Uh, my second favorite one was Miss Being Happy, the Cloud Nun track from Lights Out. I thought the vocals were very, very pretty, and I really liked the uh, production. It was a style that I hadn't heard in a while. So, you know, I, I loved that one. And then my favorite one, the other nine I gave, was Odyssey by Direct and Aether. Uh, I loved hearing that glitchy, inspected-esque style on the label, coupled with, you know, those beautiful vocal chops and directs great chord progressions and I think it just worked out so well to hear not only like the emotion but also the detail in there. And as far as the other side of the comp goes, the lowest score, I didn't go that low but I gave two tracks a four. My second least favorite on here was Lost My Mind, the Inverness and William Bolton track. I, I found it to be painfully generic. I, it, It's catchy but in, almost in like an annoying way to me. So. That, that one I ended up putting really low because, you know, even though I wasn't too crazy about the other two Inverness tracks on there, at least he tried to do something interesting with the production as far as that goes. But here, the, an effort wasn't really made. It was just a straight pop song, and that, that was kind of disappointing to me. But then my last place, 
even though I didn't find it to be as annoying, I can at least respect Lost My Mind because it's like a bad concept but it's done well. But this last place was a bad concept done poorly which is Broken Glass by Sabai. It doesn't try to be interesting in the first place and then Sabai's production, I mean we've mentioned this before but whenever we try and compare a song to a bad one we either say the whales EP or Sabai. So if it sounds like yeah. it's a bi track then it's probably not a good sign. But yeah, it doesn't try to do anything interesting, but really I think its biggest sin is just that the production is just so lacking and like the mixing, the mastering, that even the uninteresting thing that could have had impact just kind of falls way flat for me. And then overall, I I was actually kind of underwhelmed by this. I only gave like six tracks above a seven, which is a normal amount for me for like Uncaged, but for Instinct, that was kind of low. And you know, for the most part, it's just like bad computer, Ellis and Cloud None and Direct carrying for me. So even though I did enjoy quite a few tracks on here, uh, they're, the highs just weren't as high for me. Yeah, uh, I was really disappointed by this compilation, not because there's a ton of terrible tracks, but I will get to those. But there's just so many like mediocre mm -hmm. and just bland and uninteresting tracks. I had mentioned this in the server earlier, but I think I gave 15 out of 40 tracks on this compilation a 5, which is almost unheard of and is kind of ridiculous, but hmm. uh, whatever. But like looking at the top of the list, that's usually a lot of like names that I already like on the label. Revival by Justin Gent, Chasing Clouds by Bad Computer, Don't Say You're Sorry by Ellis, uh, Odyssey by Direct and Aether, which we've all which all of which we've talked about already on this podcast, but my number one by far was Friends by Roman Silver featuring Che, which is, in my opinion, one of the most sonically interesting and creative tracks on the label and just has like so many little minute details that every listen that I come back to this, I just pick up more and more on. Maybe it's just because I'm just like a Roman Silver stand, but this is like <coughs> an amazing track. And at the bottom, there are really only two tracks that I thought were like abysmally bad. Uh, one of which was Let Go by Good Times Ahead and Tony <laughs> Romero, my last place, which I, on the podcast, I did a rant on about how pretty much every part of the song is terrible and just, Im and just impractical and like inexperienced for those two artists. And then the other one is Arcade by Half an Orange, which is basically Half an Orange is going in the worst creative direction possible with their sound. I but like then, how like, you spared Nitro Fun the name call for that one. Oh uh, yeah, well it's like Nitro Fun barely did anything in that song other than add some bleeps and bloops in the drop, which aren't even good. But like after that, you just get into like the really, really mediocre and just bland stuff starting with like Sabai or mm -hmm. Sabai and Nonsense and Snaps or Snaus is Golden, which is just the same melody over and over for two minutes. And yeah, it's just I'm disappointed. It's just very uninteresting. Yeah. All right. Well, I'll start with my uh, top two, I guess. Uh, in second place, I put "Thinking About You" by Rumessi's Beat. And um, at first, when I first heard the song, I didn't like it that much. I thought it was alright. But as I was ranking, it really grew on me. So I just I I already like DNB a lot, so I kind of have a bias towards that. And uh, the second drop, which it, like changed to I don't know what you want to call it, jump style. Y'all are the ones that know subgenres, but uh, I really liked it. Uh, and number one was Bad Computer Truth. Now I only really like Bad Computer. Almost all of his songs on the label are like eight plus for me. And the first time I listened to this song, I already knew that this was going to be my favorite Bad Computer song. I just something about it, I really like it. I really like the vocals, and uh, I really like the drop especially. It's just a really enjoyable listen to me. Uh, the bottom two. Uh, at 39, I also had uh, Tony Romero let go. It just does not sound good. It's very repetitive. It sounds very dated. I just did not like it. And in last place, I had um, the very controversial uh, direct opal. What? Classic geeky. Yeah, yeah, okay. Oh no. Okay, no just, all right, look. All right, look. Right <laughs> off the bat, I just don't like uh, down tempo or UK garage, whatever you want to call it. I just don't like it that much. It's not my kind of music. I find it to be boring. But I do think some good songs can come out of it. Uh, like um, Juliet from last year made my top Whoa. 10 of 2019. Because I just, Whoa. I really think that's a beautiful song, especially the vocals. But no, it Opal. <laughs> Bro, <Berlin. laughs> Opal doesn't do anything for me. It just, it's very repetitive. I feel like you have the first verse. 
and then you get into the drop and the drop is just the verse but slightly louder and then the second verse is the same as the first verse and then the drop is just again the verse but slightly louder i feel like it's the same song for its entire four minutes and i just can't get into it there's nothing interesting in, in there for me so i'm sorry but overall the the compilation i would say is kind of below average but it wasn't painfully bad mm-hmm. but you know it was like all right thank you geeky of course all right on to my top two my number two i have don't say you're sorry <laughs> by ellis and maribel i think that maribel does an incredible job on the vocal performance just getting you like really into the groove of the song and then when the drop like i'm like i'll be just singing along to it singing my heart out and then when the drop hits i get really into it like it's just so funky and groovy and just such a fun song that i like can't help but like almost want to dance to it Hmm. i just think and i think (laughs) that this is basically true for every song on ellis's ep definitely one of my favorites this year but don't say you're sorry is just uh, my favorite of the bunch of those and then my favorite song of the year which is um, obviously my favorite song on the comp, is um, Chasing Clouds by Bad Computer. I absolutely adore this song, and um, although it's grown off me a little bit, um, it was like at one point my fourth favorite song on the label, I still think it's an incredible song. I think this is probably Danica's best performance that she's ever done, especially um, in like the second half of the song. Like, she'll just be you know you're she has like her normal verse and then she starts singing french i think that part is incredibly cool but obviously um i think danica is definitely um one of the biggest reasons why i like this song i'm always singing my heart out when i when i'm listening to it but bad computer obviously um backs it up so well I love the drop. It's got the energy it needs in some perfect places. Like you have that dichotomy of like those super like just impactful notes and then you get like that like bass. Mm-hmm. Everything about it just comes together and makes <laughs> one of my favorite songs on the label. All right. And um, for my least favorite, um I mean obviously my least favorite is uh let go good times ahead and tony romero yeah, i i okay i can i actually think that this song is decent i've kind of gotten into it like the melody i think is not bad but just how overpowering and harsh the bass is in the song just completely ruins any enjoyment i can get from this song at all hmm. And then, if I were to pick another song, hmm, I think I'm gonna go with Opal by Direct. <laughs> Thank you. I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go with New World by Hoax Pokes and Rogue. I think that this is or Prox. Whoops. <laughs> Hocus Pocus, bro. Hocus, <laughs> Hoke, New World by Hope by uh. Hope Pricks and Rogue. I think that um, uh, this is probably ro- like Rogue's worst <clears throat> vocal performance. I just like I wasn't a fan at all going into this backing not so good as well behind his vocals. And then when you get to the drop, it's just painfully boring. The switch up into DNB is also extremely forced. Hmm. Just I don't really find anything particularly good about this song and how about your uh, overall thoughts on the comp overall thoughts um i i kind of wish i paid more attention to um the other songs like the other compilations that monster cats put out because i think that this one is like painfully bad but Damn. like, I'm not sure how good their other comps are, so there could be like, it could be like average for them. I just mainly found most of the comp to be incredibly boring. Like there were probably five songs that I thought were good on this compilation. But 
yeah, again, I would just wish I knew more about the other, like, paid more attention to the other ones, because, you know, maybe maybe this is a bit better than I think it is. All right. I'm going to start off with my overall thoughts. I think I don't really care about comps at all, really any comps. I think, I think the idea of having a compilation album is kind of a, a dated idea. Um, and so I've never really paid attention to how good other comps are. I'll just say that going through and listening to the 40 that are on there, I feel like it's gotten maybe a little bit too much hate, but I, I, I still agree that it's mostly boring, but I found a lot more moments to enjoy, I think, than most people. Um, my favorite track on the comp, also known as my favorite track of the year, is Don't Say You're Sorry by Ellis. Hey, good pick. Uh, hey. <laughs> I think uh, Maribel does a fantastic job. Uh, I mean, if it were just a basic pop song with her, that would be great. But then it's not. It's Ellis, and he adds something just so unbelievably funky. <clears throat> and, like, like, the moment I start... I start listening to Don't Say You're Sorry, I just get in the groove. You know? Hmm. I start for sure, for shaking sure. my ass. And then... Uh, the second track that I, I appreciate and enjoy that I wanted to talk about is Therapy by Conroe. Kind of a weird pick if you would ask a lot of people. But, I, once again, I'm a Conroe apologist. I think his new stuff... I mean, after connecting the dots, pretty much his entire discography is very good. Um, and I think Therapy is the height of his n new album era. Uh, he adds something a, a bit uh, soulful, even bluesy. Uh, even though it's it's still Conroe, he's, you know, he's nerdy white guy. Conroe's chicken trying farm. to make pop music <laughs> but uh, I think he really succeeds in therapy uh, it, and it's catchy as all hell um, my as for the low end of the comp my absolute least favorite song and uh, my least favorite track of the entire year is heartless by Dexter King and Aaron Richards um, Jesus Christ <laughs> Dexter King should stick to the boring future house pop. Um, because <coughs> when he... From, from what I can tell when he branches out, uh, it sucks. He doesn't know how to make future bass. That is some... That is some F-tier mixing and mastering. This is true. God, I, it's, I like, agree. it's like we... Re it's like we reverted back to 2011. Ugh. And then Aaron Richards is maybe the single most irritating vocalist that I can think of. Uh, I just, I don't know why that that EDM artist looked at this grown-up version of Dewey from Malcolm in the Middle doing a half-decent 20, 2011 Justin Bieber impression and thought, well, this is, this is the new EDM vocalist sensation that I want to feature on all my tracks. I don't understand that. His voice grates on my nerves. He sounds like a child. My God. And then, um, <clears throat> I don't really, I don't really want to talk about the song that would be next lowest on my list because I don't really care. One song that I want to talk about because I was most disappointed by is "Friends" by Roman Silver. Um, it's. It's very, very disappointing to me because I know that there's there's good stuff in there, but I don't like Che in it. Uh, I think she she lowers the song on its own, and then that drop is just way too cluttered. Like there's so many things going on that it it's just irritating to listen to. Um, I think. I can imagine a good song that sounds like Friends, but Friends isn't it. It exists, and it's called Yoko. <laughs> All right. Mm -hmm. 
Now, moving on to the last Monster Cat release of the past week, the entire Promised Land EP. So not only did we get a compilation, but we also got, not sorry, not EP, but album. We got a comp and an album here. Um, you can just give your overall thoughts, but if you want to go into specifics, feel free. Um, uh, there are a few tracks that I want to mention. First one being Start Again. I thought it was a slapper when it came out, and I still think it's a slapper, and it's my favorite one on the album. I really enjoyed it, and I think the vocals are solid. Born for this, it was interesting to hear Muzz try a, a, a new genre that isn't like above 150 BPM, but I think it it kind of fell flat on its face, and I, I, I felt very upset because, you know, Muzz kind of like Electro or whatever could have been really cool but this one was definitely my least favorite of the album. I just thought that the drops had no energy and it kind of killed whatever flow it had. Starglide grew on me quite a bit. I think um, Cami Robinson, I think she slays the vocals on here. And while I still don't think that the drops live up to the level that the intro was going for, I, they definitely grew on me a lot and I enjoy this a lot more than I did when it came out. The Sanctuary, uh, I thought it was a pretty neat callback to F Minor Factory. I thought that was cool, and I know this one's not too popular, but I, I do quite enjoy it. Uh, the Warehouse, I still think, slaps. It's one of my favorites. And then the last one, the other new one, the collab with Coven, Catharsis. It reminds me of a lot of uh, Coven-style songs like Voices and Missing, but like combined with Muzz sound design. And while I don't like it as much as those tracks, like Voices is one of my favorite tracks on the label, so something that's going to have at least some influence from there is going to score high on this album for me. And overall, I thought it was it was pretty cool to see Muzz branch out because this is definitely his most varied work and with a lot of diversity here, but definitely not all of the tracks were hits for me, but the hits were, were quite good, I think. Yeah, I thought this like this is probably like a solid like six out of ten album for me. I think like Muzz's world building and like a the ambience that he brings in his builds and whatnot, and in certain songs, their drops is like really stunning, and you can mm -hmm. and you can tell how much he's improved on that front since like the Cascade EP and those like the last tracks that he did even. Mm -hmm. But th I think there's two sort of like crippling prop. Pl like crippling flaws to this album. The first one is that half of the time, like the drops really do not match up at all to like mm -hmm. in quality to the like builds and ambience that it brings. Like Nemesis, where the drop is literally like your standard buzz track without like any variation. Uh, Born for this is very much held back by some questionable sampling choices. Uh, start again just really falls flat for me like it just feels so empty but the biggest problem is that this is uh, very clearly influenced by a certain artist and that artist being uh, Pendulum, Pendulum with the side of Knife Party on uh, Born for This but mm -hmm. like if you told me that tracks like Start Again or The Sanctuary or Salvation were long lost Pendulum B-sides I probably would not I probably would believe you like it's so, like especially in <laughs> I found I realized this yesterday but there's a guitar riff about 10 seconds into Nemesis which is almost directly copied from the song Immunize by Pendulum featuring uh, Liam Howlett and that was sort of jarring but I think on the positive side I think when Buzz's own voice really sort of carries the track especially on the last three tracks The Warehouse Somewhere Else in Catharsis I think it really leads to some interesting stuff somewhere else in particular brings a lot of the world building and ambience present in the builds actually into the drops which is nothing that which doesn't really happen on the album and for the one time it does it's absolutely amazing probably one of my favorite dnb tracks of the year mm -hmm. and yeah catharsis is really is like a really good track coven works really well on it i wouldn't be surprised if max also had some background production on it and the warehouse is just a really, really cool neuro track. Yeah. Although I think it's kind of interesting that you included the sanctuary in there because if that was like a lost pendulum track, but it literally had like Welcome to Junction Seven, I would be very, well, very sketch on that one. Well, yeah. Like if it didn't have the Welcome to Jun Junction Seven, then took the melt, then took the riff from Children of Hell, then didn't have that. Then I would expect it. But yeah, <laughs> I forgot about that. 
All right, so overall, I thought it was pretty good. I think there was more positive than negative. And uh, specifically, I really liked Nemesis. I'm not sure if that's popular or not. I don't think it is. No. But uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, the vocal sample is a little bit cringe, but you know, I think it's a pretty good song. I think currently it's in my top ten of the year. So it also came out on my birthday, so that's a plus. Oh, nice. And yeah, thank you, thank you. And um, the second thing I want to point out is the sanctuary. I really enjoyed the uh, callback to Junction Seven, like uh, I think both of you had said. But that's pretty much it for the thoughts for uh, Promised Land. All right, so I definitely want to talk about two tracks. Uh, the first one I want to talk about is my favorite track on the album, Star Glide. I think that, well actually, um, another track too, but um, I think that Star, that I think that like, you can tell with Muzz's leads, they're like very kind of light. And I feel like in tracks like Nemesis, Start again, which use those like light leads when they're trying to make like these big bangers. I feel like that doesn't really work, but I feel like Starglide is kind of going for something different. As the name suggests, I almost kind of feel like I'm riding on a star when I'm listening to this. Um, it really works well with the um, like what the song is going for, and I definitely can't forget about um is it cammy i think yeah. her, her performance is probably my favorite on the album i really think that um she adds like that's definitely one of the reasons why i particularly like this song i definitely think i can get really well into the atmosphere more because of her vocal performance and uh, i think that the rock switch up at the end like there's a lot of them throughout this album but I think that this one does the best job. Mm -hmm. um, another song I wanted to talk about um, is actually Valhalla. I think that um, a lot of the problems on this album for me were the drops, but I think that what this album succeeded in doing was showing how like crazy good Muzz's world of building is mm -hmm. and how good he can like make an atmosphere and I think that Valhalla does that perfectly well and I think for that specific reason of how good I think Valhalla does to really get me into um like how well it really gets me into the album and uh how for the first track I think I might have overrated Nemesis on like my first listen of the album just for that reason which you know definitely goes to show how much i think that um valhalla does really well at like uh making world building and getting me into the atmosphere of the album last one i want to talk about is somewhere else obviously i know that a lot of people agree that um danica puts in an incredible vocal performance and muzz's backing is beautiful i think it's like somewhere around three minutes of intro you get and i think mm -hmm. that that is what really makes the song what it is but it's definitely a bit more controversial once you get to the like build up and drop i would say that i think that the build up does a really good job of like the theming of it like you kind of have like this bubbly-esque type of um feeling and then when you get to the drop, like, um, it's like somewhere else, but, um, it's kind of, but like, obviously the album art is like a whale, like you're underwater. I can really feel that. Like, I feel like the drop is fit. And for me, it definitely feels satisfying after going through those three minutes of intro. I actually feel like I'm getting something when I get to that buildup in the drop. Mm. Um, as for my other thoughts, I felt like... I really appreciated Muzz going into um, other territories, even though I didn't particularly like them. Um, this album just to me shows that I think Muzz does an incredible job at making atmosphere, at doing world building. Just that, if his, just that, I don't think his drops are as strong as uh, yeah some others. I was gonna mention. Uh but I forgot to, but for somewhere else, even though it's 
It's not even close to my top of the album. I do think that that like three minute intro might be my favorite moment on the whole album because the world building there I think is on full display and, and like you mentioned, the vocals there are fantastic too. Yeah, Danica is always someone I love. Like, mm-hmm. I, I, I fully agree with that. Um, I think this entire album turned out better than I was expecting before I heard any of the songs. Like, before I heard any of the songs, I was just expecting more generic Muzz, because Muzz had really, really fallen off for me uh, over the past couple years that he had been releasing. It was like, he, he released he released Spectrum EP, which had Outsiders, which I liked, and then immediately after that, just everything was a miss. It was continuous. Uh, and so I was really down on Muzz going into it, but I think he, he surprised me, um, showing that he could do some things. Now, by no means is it a, a perfect album. Um, in fact, I think I think a majority of it is not uh, in my range of taste. But I want to talk about my uh, favorite track on the album, spoilers for Tuesday's List Talks albums, uh, but uh, my favorite track in the album is Starglide. I think more than any other track on the album. It does a great job at setting up an atmosphere uh, and then following through with that, both in terms of its progression and just general momentum and and the way it makes me feel. Uh, like like you said, Migo, it, uh, like it's very light and that it works very well for what it is because Muzz decided to go more melodic and I, I really appreciate that and again, Cammy does a fantastic job. Mm-hmm. I, she really lifts the song, and then that that rock switch up at the end is one of my favorite moments on the album. Of course, there are several of those rock switch ups on the entire album, which in in pretty much every song that those switch ups appear in, they're my favorite part of the song. I think, which makes me think. Um, Maybe Muzz should just make rock music. <laughs> yeah, just you know? straight rock. Except, except I, I think this is funny. There's already a rock band called Muzz. Yep. <laughs> oh man. <laughs> and they're and they're like, and... arguably worse than like they're far worse than the dubstep Muzz, unfortunately. Bro, Jonah he Mason. he switched from Muzzy to Muzz just to get his name stolen again. What's next? Yeah. Muzz with only one Z. <laughs> it was funny. He switched, no, no, just literally at, at the beginning of this year, he made the announcement, like, like, big announcement, I'm changing my name from Muzzy to Muzz, and then, like, one second later, the the rock band Muzz announced their existence and dropped an album called Bro. Muzz. <laughs> yep. <laughs> nice. it, so it would be funny to me, you know what's hilarious, you know what would be hilarious if Muzz sued Muzz, formerly known as Muzzy, and then he had to change his name again. Again, bro. <laughs> uh, it would just be a wild ride for him. Yeah, I can only I can only dream that that would happen because that would be hilarious. Um, but anyway, I think he really succeeds in uh, doing new things. Um, like he had kind of dipped a toe in rock before, but I think going more full fledged on, on in in various points on this album, uh, he. He did a, a, a much better job than he had been doing previously. Uh, like I said, Starglide's my favorite. Um, ones I was disappointed by, as far as as far as pre-releases go, I think Nemesis is by far the weakest. Um, it's it's not just standard boring, uh, trying too hard to be a banger, Muzz D and B, like he was making before. Um, but it's also blatantly annoying with that vocal sample um, mm-hmm. just repeated over and over. And again, um, I know it's probably not a concern for many other people, but the the words don't make sense. <laughs> why are you warning me if I am your nemesis? Why would you warn me? And why would you warn me 80 times? <laughs> <laughs> anyway, um... And as far as new releases go, I don't really care about them a whole lot. I think Born For This is interesting to see him do something 
uh, like that. I would like to see him do more, but I would just like it to be better. Um, yeah, do it good next catharsis, time. Yeah, catharsis is is uh, good. Um, I like the Coven influence, and then I think the one that disappointed me the most of the new releases was uh, Salvation. Uh, I think it has great vocals, you know, by by someone who's like a far better version of Sullivan King, and then it has that that just godly guitar solo at the end. Like, yeah, I was gonna oh, say, oh fuck, I love that. Low saves that song so much. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah, I mean, because otherwise I wouldn't like it because the D and B in there just does not fit at all with the rest of the song. Like it, it's not. Not only is it too hectic and annoying for me to enjoy, but it's it's just such a, a huge shift in what the rest of the song is going for. So yeah, I think overall the album has many surprises that I'm I'm happy about. Uh, I think Muzz kind of freshened himself up a bit, but uh, I think there's still plenty of work to be done on his part. All right, then moving into. Uh... The other label we wanted to cover, Inspected dropped a, 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 a mini compilation, only four tracks long, powered by Inspected Series 1. And now I, I personally don't, I, I don't really want to choose a favorite or least favorite for this one because I think that they're all pretty close in quality for me. I enjoy all of the ones here. I think the sound design is really cool in all of them. Uh, the True Phonics track I found to be really pretty. I like the guitar in that a lot. And uh, the the Proteal track, it was uh, neat to hear a bit more of like the chill side showing through for there. So yeah, I, I enjoy all the tracks on here and I, I think I'm going to give them all another shot. I might be coming back to all of these and I think it, it's while there weren't any tracks that I think stood out like way above the other ones and I was like, wow, this is amazing. I do think that this is very a very consistently good kind of mini compilation here. Uh, yeah, I I was definitely excited for this because the past two Powered by Inspected compilations were really, really solid. <laughs> well, yeah, because it's Inspected. And yeah. This, yeah, this didn't let me down. All of the tracks are, re- pre- are like, really solid and at, l- at the very least have, like, very amazing production quality, but that's sort of par for ex- Inspected stuff. But sort of just going down track by track, uh, the track Missile by Volume is really cool. It's nice to see this very Space Laces inspired sort of trap stuff to be on the label and be this like technical. Mm-hmm. And then tr- the True Phonics track Snow is probably my least favorite, mainly because the first half feels very run of the mill for Inspected, sort of a lot like stuff from like artists like Sorrow or Scope or like those bunch but the second half with its use of i'm assuming field recordings as well as an acoustic guitar adds a really nice touch uh the proteal track peaker's advantage that one is nice proteal tracks don't really have a whole lot to them but they're usually like catchy enough and always like on the shorter side which is a nice touch Hmm. and then by far my favorite on the compilation is the echo map track heat which might be my favorite echo map track period which is this four minute well i guess all echo map songs are like four minutes 40 seconds but um yeah (laughs) but it's like this it's this journey of like a progressive house song that goes from this like mystical sort of melodic section at the start until it becomes more industrial and pounding and i especially love the little like dial-up noise that takes that appears in the second half of the song like a lot I just, yeah, it's such a well, amazingly textured song that goes through so many interesting ideas while still feeling really concise. Yeah, overall, I liked it. I like the EP. Uh, I, I I like a lot of what Inspected puts out. The only song I really want to mention specifically, I guess, is Missile by Volume. I really liked it as well. The first half of the drop, kind of like I was iffy about, but the second half of the drop, I, I really enjoyed. And that's definitely my favorite on the mini comp. Uh, everything else, I mean, I would say it's average, but the sound design is very nice. Like, I enjoy the songs, they just nothing blew me away other than uh, Missile, I guess. All right. All right. Um, I guess I'll kind of go through my thoughts on, like, um, probably all of them. Starting off with uh, Missile by Volume, I, I think the sound design on this <laughs> is nuts. It bangs, and, like, I, I really like... Um, 
I don't know. Some a lot of the times my favorite things that get me hyped are like the um vocal samples and I think like uh for some reason the vocal sample in this one really gets me hyped. Um the one thing I will say though is that I am kind of feeling like this song's wow factor is wearing off and it might kind of turn into like a song that I more view as like a sound design show than like an actual song in the future so I guess I'll just see about that. Hmm. Um, for Snow, I think that um, it's such a pretty song. I get like goosebumps during like the mid section with that like guitar and that repetitive like vocal sample that almost sounds like it's talking between two people. I think that that is really really cool but it obviously has um two flaws to it the first one is that like it's almost like a steam kettle riser at yeah the that front. was so weird <laughs> that is that that almost ruins the song for me and i do not know why that was put in there and i also kind of dislike the um high-pitched vocal chops in like the latter half of the first i'm gonna say in air quotes a drop of the song but um yeah other than that other than those two things i think that the song is absolutely beautiful and i'll definitely have to check out more of two phonics's stuff then going to um proteal um i think that my favorite thing about this i'm obviously going to talk about the um the vocal sample that's repeated through there it's, um i love when artists do this, when they put a vocal sample and then just put like cool stuff behind it, mm -hmm. like Prodial did that repetitive vocal sample and then put like, you know, these crazy basses. You can hear that in this, like, I mean, I'm going to compare it to um, Life Goes On by Soup Andreas. Um, like when you just have like that repetitive vocal sample, it really lets you get into the atmosphere of the song and it's just so enticing that vocal sample to just listen to really gets me in the atmosphere of it and then final song um heat by echo map i've basically loved every song that echo maps come out with since the alias change even though i still loved um i still love synergy sound but um i really do think that uh like this might be my favorite song on the compilation I really like the house beat throughout it, and um, the first drop is just such a fun listen. And then, as Kovac said, like the like dial up noise and like the second part of it, it's really cool. It's just like it change it progresses throughout so perfectly. I, I just think it's a really cool song. Uh, I largely enjoyed this comp. Uh, it's a three for it. It, it got three for four. Um, listening to this uh only one of them was one that i disliked but you can't guess which one that is it's is missile it? yep. um <laughs> nice um uh, by no means do i find music like this enjoyable um just listening to something like that i cannot enjoy it like i can't i cannot appreciate sound design i cannot um comment uh on the song in a meaningful way other than that it just irritates the hell out of me um but other than that i think the comp is great uh i really enjoyed the proteal track i really enjoyed um uh snow mm -hmm. and uh but the one i want to talk about uh by far my favorite is heat by echo map um i love the entire song all the way through like there are very few things that I could pick out as things that I think could have been done better. I think this song is almost at at the as good of a level as it possibly could be. Um, all the way throughout, I I really enjoy the the sort of harder hitting house sounds um, mixed with the uh, percussive complexity of uh, genres like garage. You know, um, it's it's very interesting to listen to because there's little things that you can pick out. Uh, it's very well layered and textured. Uh, I'm 
Yeah, I'm I'm very blown away by uh, uh by the Echo Map song. Uh, yeah, I think uh, I think overall good comp, uh, except for Missile. All right, then moving into <clears throat> just a few other tracks, various tracks that we wanted to discuss from the past week. The first one being a new Dirty Audio and Tucker Creeway. I have no idea how to pronounce the last name. Even knows. <laughs> and it's Probably called. Creeway. Blue Steel, and uh, for this one I really liked the uh, the melodies in here, and I thought the chord snaps near the latter half of the uh, first drop, when it almost went kind of future bassy, I thought that was really neat. But as far as all the heavier elements in here goes, I, I really didn't care for any of them. I mean, yeah, the basses were just, they were just alright. It wasn't necessarily a horrible track, but it just didn't do enough for me to want to uh, come back to it, and all the heavier stuff just kind of fell flat for me. So, uh, important question for uh, Dirty Audio and Tucker Creeway: Out of all dubstep artists that you attempt to rip off on your new song, why in God's name would you ever rip off to Soki? Like, uh, it's just such a weird choice because, like, he's never really been that great in the first place, but. Yeah, other than that, it's just like, if you told me this was Tosoki, then I'd probably, like the, like the Pendulum, I'll probably be saying that a lot today, but if you told me that this was a Tosoki track, I probably wouldn't believe you. It has the stuttery, high-end, heavy first drop, and then it goes, then it's a lot more, like, start-stop in the second drop, then it's got Jersey Club in the third one. Yeah, that, like, that, that last switch-up felt really flat for me. Yeah, and the yeah the Jersey Club switch up doesn't work in the slightest. It feels like it has no weight to it. But like the one thing that I did enjoy is what also Mustrino mentioned is the chord stabs in the second half or the second half of the first drop, because I thought that it was it's like a cool touch in the first drop, and I thought it was going into this like very sort of high end heavy, very stabby future bass angle, which would have been really cool. But mm -hmm. instead, we got Jersey Club. So yeah, no, I'll probably never listen to this again. <laughs> Well, uh, I actually enjoy Tosoki's music, so personally, I don't have a problem with it. Uh, compared to his other Monster Cat releases, which I didn't particularly care for, I actually do really like this track. And the switch up, uh, I actually did enjoy the switch up as well. So I think our opinions are pretty much opposite on this one, Classic as, they, as they often are. But uh, <laughs> yeah. that, that's, that's pretty much all the thoughts I have on that one. Thank you, Geeky. Um... I gotta say just one thing about this, that I've heard it twice, can't particularly remember what it sounds like, so I guess that's just how memorable it is for me. Hmm. I particularly remember the four, the four switch up and the last drop being super gimmicky, just why? Mm -hmm. Otherwise, I don't know, I thought it was like decent, but nothing that memorable. And I, I, was, I was actually, like... I knew that this sounded like someone, and I was trying to pinpoint it. And when you said Tosoki, just if it, it just registered in my mind, hmm. like I like I can definitely see the connection now. Yeah. Oh, dirty audio! How far you have come um, from making tolerable music? I mean, um, <laughs> you really pulled the one eighty on us. This is the yeah. This is the guy that uh, brought you. Underrated bangers like Roller Coaster, or uh, you know, even Racks, which I don't even like anymore. I will take any day over this. Just uh, he, he's emulating a whole bunch of people's styles here. Um, like I, I absolutely get the uh, Tosoki comparison, but I also, when I was listening to it, kind of thought it reminded me of Poison by Nonsense. Nice. Uh, like, like I half expected, like before the drops, just to hear "Let the beat go." <laughs> was, Guess who's back? I was the. Yeah, I was just kind of cringing in terror the entire time. Um, no, I don't think this song has redeeming qualities. Um, Dirty Audio has made songs that I like before in the past. But uh, he's come a long, long way from doing that. Alright. Moving on to the next track. Yeah, the Echoes and Yo Maze collab, Handle, which I thought it was, it was really nice. I like a lot of Yo Maze's music. Uh, the one that uh, 
comes to mind that was kind of recent was Bitter. I really didn't like it at first because it sounded like painfully generic, but upon re-listening to it, it got really catchy and it really grew on me. And this one I find to be really pretty as well. I think uh, kind of their voices blend together really nicely. And yeah, I'm, I'm, I think I'm going to be coming back to this one in the future. I was... I think going into this, I was really excited for it because I'm a really big fan of Echoes' work. I think their their style, while it is really generic for post-rock and IDM sort of influenced pop stuff, or not IDM, but Indietronica influenced pop stuff. <laughs> Imagine. <laughs> That's just Radiohead. But, um, at, or I was going to mention, uh, their album Even Though You're Gone is really, really nice and whatnot. And then Yo Mace, while well, I'm not really a big fan of his voice or any of the lyrical content of his albums, his production is usually amazing and i can say that about this track the production is really really nice and i think that um when uh alexandra norton of echo's voice comes in through the second half it works a lot more but yo mace just really does not work like his voice does not work at all on this track half the time for me it sounds incomprehensible almost like uh playboy cardi's voice on earthquake by Tyler <laughs> i was not seeing that one coming i'll tell you that that one uh but like it's just i don't know it's not really it's not really catching my eye this one mumble rap but it's indie pop bro yeah. but it's idm <laughs> i wish Jesus. actually no i don't wish i don't want that <laughs> I'd want that to laugh at, but that's about yeah. it. That would uh, be interesting. I don't really have anything to say about this one. Uh, it's not bad. I don't think it's bad, but I also don't think it's very good or, in or interesting. So I don't really have anything to add. It, it, right. it was okay. All right. I think um, this is definitely... Uh, I would definitely agree that this is like a beautiful piece. I did like a lot of the instrumentation and the piano, but it's just kind of like sad boy music. Um, in this case, I don't particularly enjoy it, but, I mean, maybe it could grow on me, but I probably won't come back to it. <clears throat> um, my main problem with this song is that it doesn't really go anywhere meaningful. Like, it feels like it builds to something, but then nothing ever really comes. Um, and... Uh, I think vocals wise, however you pronounce his name, I think, uh, yeah, Yo Maze. Yeah. I think his uh, voice does a disservice to the track, honestly. And uh, you know how I feel about sad white boy music. Although, I, I don't hate this, which is more than I can say about most sad boy music. Um, so. I'm getting flashbacks I already. Would... <laughs> good for them i mean they're not eden um yeah good for them they made a track it exists they made music congrats yeah all right moving on to the next one on this list this is uh, one of my uh two i have actually my two personal recommendations are back to back you won't believe they come from this for the second one. I <laughs> swear to God. We'll we'll get there when we get there, but you won't even. I can't. I can't wait. You won't. You won't even believe they're from the same person. But this first one, the new Modus track, Paracosm, featuring vocals from Miss Lena. I've been uh, following Modus for quite some time now. I find his uh, production to be honestly fantastic, and I think that's on full display here. The songwriting is really neat. He introduces a lot of cool chords in there and then like the chord stabs themselves are very filling which i find to be very important in like melodic music because so many times i hear like a melodic dubstep track and then the chords are like so empty but these really really have punch to them the sound design is pretty good but i don't think it's necessarily his best but it's still cool and it keeps the track interesting and the whole tempo switch up at the end is really really cool and i think that it gives the song a whole lot more flavor and yeah overall i really really enjoy this one no oh, i'm not much of a i'm not big on this one i normally i do like modus for a lot of the reasons that you described this sound design is amazing has such a punch that's sort of lacking in a lot of color based stuff other than like sub mace aura tracks but this my main critique with this is that it has so much pink noise in it that it's just it feels so like muddy and flat 
that it it just completely throws me off from really enjoying it. And while I think the ideas and sound design are really nice, I think for, to me at least, a lot of them feel just really stitched together without much through line. It feels like it's just bouncing off like 50 different ideas at once without really any connection to it. So it just feels really disjointed, especially in the second half. But yeah, um, I don't know, not a big fan. Uh, disappointing. Dang, I have yet to recommend a song and I've recommended like almost 10 now and they've all been misses unfortunately for you. One yeah, day, well, one I day. Mean, all the tr it's been the opposite too though with my recommendations. Wait, wait till we get to the next track. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> we'll get there when we get there. <laughs> all oh, right, Kiki. Well, I really enjoy a lot of what West Down puts out, like very much so. So I had high hopes going into this and I mean, it was good. I, mm -hmm. I enjoyed the song. But something about it just feels missing to me, and I don't know like what it is. I know particularly I didn't uh, uh, care for the uh, verses that much. I just felt they were boring. And the drops are, are nice, but I don't think they were nice enough to, I guess, save the track for me. So overall, I, th I thought it was very good, but it just wasn't, uh, it wasn't as good as I was expecting, I guess. Alright, so I've listened to every song on Rushdown, and I think particularly this year, when they came out with their color-based compilation like early in the year I think that it made a lot of artists start to conform to a specific sound mm -hmm. and a lot of the label <laughs> just basically blended together and it started sounding the same for me um, but I was really excited when I saw Modus um, was going to release on the label because he came out with like New Year Protocol 5, his Reflection Remix, um, and I have like three, and I had like two songs on the label that I had added, um, that year already to my playlist, and one of them was Over You by Modus, and I was really hoping that he would, um, like, kind of turn the label, like, back on track, and he definitely did in my opinion. I think that um, Miss Lena definitely provides a great vocal performance, but the drop, like specifically the first two drops, I think that the energy just hits exactly when you need it to. It's like a perfect combination of like Modus's um, like sound along with like, uh, you know, the signature rushdown sound. Mm -hmm. And that switch up at the end where the drop, like it's almost like a laser drop, that is really, really, really cool. I, it's just, it's super long too, and somehow I just don't feel it, like, I'm having so much fun listening to it, the time just, like, flies by. Really good stuff, and I think it's been, yeah, nine months, this is the first song that I've, uh, liked on Rushdown again, so good job to Modus. Hmm. Um, this to me feels more like a, a, a poor emulation of AU5 rather than anything else. Um... I think he does a good job at making this style of dubstep, but there are certain points uh, when I'm listening to this song where I just feel like he tried to cram too many musical ideas into too little of a space, and it hampers my enjoyment. Um, and I think largely uh, it's okay, but I won't be coming back to it. We, we need, like, a grand introduction for this no, song. No, we fucking don't. Yeah, can, can I get a drum roll? Come on, come on. Alright, the next song, my other uh, uh, recommendation here, which I actually got added later, but, you know, I, I had everyone... You had to listen to it afterwards because it was just that important. The new Pickle track, Like That. So, if you, if you are unaware why I'm such a huge fan of Pickle... <laughs> You know, to, to the untrained eye, it might just be like, oh, you know, this music is is so bad that it's that it's entertaining, and, and that's certainly part of it, but it goes deeper than that. You know, you see, I'm getting into a bit of the lore here, right? But the first Pickle track that I heard was on the drums, and the whole plot of the music video was that this, this artist Pickle, who's portrayed as, as a pickle, puts no effort into any of the music and then it just blows up 
But the grand irony and overall, like, really the grand beauty of this is that that's exactly what happened. <laughs> like, they, they have, like, a max of five instruments per song, and they each get millions of views consistently. So the fact that, like, Pickle was able to, like, shitpost about, hey, what if we made, like, no effort into this song and it still blew up, and then actually do that, like, that's, that's kind of amazing. But if I'm giving my actual thoughts on the song, no, I, I don't like it. I don't think I'm going to be coming back to it. But I, this definitely says more about the other artists on the label than it does about Pickle. But I get more excited when I see a Pickle release on than most other artists on Spinning. Not because I think it's going to be good, but because I know I'm going to get some sort of enjoyment out of it. Because most of the releases on the label are just so bland and lifeless that even something that's hilariously bad like this... I still enjoy more than a lot of the stuff they put out, which is unfortunate, but hey, <laughs> pickle, haha. <laughs> so yeah, time for me to go on like a full on like ramble about this crap, but I get like sort of the like ironic appeal of pickle, like it's haha funny meme pickle makes shitty bass music, but like, I, like I've sort of given up on like who is really behind this alias because i have a firm belief that the alias is actually just like five spin and records executives who just scientifically <laughs> formulate the most fucking festival ready base base house music just so they can get like fucking plays on 1001 track lists like oh my like i i don't know it's just so like every single one of his tracks is just so lifeless and just like crude and immature and like well, not even like immature, but like. Well, the I music guess videos of, are kind of yeah, janky. The music, the music videos are very immature, and a lot of the lyrics in the songs are either about shooting heroin <laughs> or eating ass. So. Uh, <laughs> yeah, basically. Like, but, like, like these aren't exactly why I hate Pickle so goddamn much. It's that is like. The entirety of him, like his, like the whole thing is that he puts no effort into music and he gets massive festival play is such a fucking spit in the face to pretty much the entirety of the, like the entirety of the ingenuity of music that like any sort of creativity is just like, it's almost like a side effect of like late stage capitalism shit. Like, yeah, we checked just, the, we checked the amount of like Spotify listeners and they have like 10 times as many as Echo per month. Yeah, it's just like. This is like scientifically, I like, I'm pretty sure I mentioned this like with um, with like the Marcus Schultz remix and of Hypnotized and like other stuff sort of like that. But songs that are just scientifically engineered to be festival played and that's and without any sort of like interesting value to it, I almost despise more than like actually bad tracks. So like overall, fuck this song. Pickle, haha, like, like, haha. Go back, go back, go back. <laughs> so before uh, this podcast, I had no idea Pickle existed. So and now, and now your life has been changed I, for the better. Yeah, I have, I have no idea there was this amount of lore uh, surrounded <laughs> around this uh, figure. But uh, yeah, obviously, uh, not a big fan of the song. Uh, it was, it was pretty repetitive. It was not interesting. And I think the vocal sample was worse than uh, Nemesis. So, that, 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 those are my thoughts. Yeah, I think they repeat it just as much as in Nemesis in like half the time. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That's another right. thing that I, <laughs> I'm going to rant more. But one thing that I didn't necessarily mention is that almost all of the vocal samples are so loud compared to the actual track and just so out of place that it's like... But, like how how do you not notice that like Anyone literally there i know i said this already but like each of their tracks is like drums bass lead uh and then, the vocal, and then maybe like one other thing so the fact yeah. that you can't even like mix those five things correctly is like <laughs> it it is very very uh i guess it's uh almost impressive how badly <laughs> they they were able to butcher their music all the time. I have notes that I was like going to uh, use for some of these, and on here I have for pickle like that as the eighth wonder of the world, <laughs> and I will disagree with that. I think pickle the alias is the eighth wonder of the world. I think that like true. that is probably the ninth. <laughs> <laughs> Like, that right. is the epitome of what makes Pickle Pickle, let's be honest. 
It's just now. The, yeah. I think yeah. for the second half of my discussion, I want to get into a bit of a conspiracy theory. Oh. But um, so we've meant so, uh, Kovac, you mentioned that um, you think it's like um, or who mentioned that it was like five? Yeah, that executive. was Kovac. Yeah. Okay. But like, most you know, you also said that like they basically ship posted and just said, oh, what if we like just put like five like elements in a song and we blow up but like and then it actually happens yeah yeah and it actually yeah. happens but like what if it's what if it's like an actually good artist that's doing this like this is just their other alias well and it's worse because they're not even trying like well well, well <laughs> what, what if, if it's they, like, like someone we like talked about today that's like straight up we're like praising them but they get like 20k <laughs> plays a month I, I, and I then they're thinking, just like, like this is their like, side hustle that's their actually their main yeah i was thinking like like <laughs> like they just spend all their time making these like gorgeous tracks and then they'll just go into like fl studio 20 for like five minutes to make their next <laughs> pickle track <laughs> yeah basically and then that and then they just get like Mil and then they just get millions of views that's like their main way of revenue so that they don't have to like sacrifice amazing you know, that's, see, that's genius genius yeah, they don't have to sacrifice like having to put out music like relentlessly they can just do whatever or it can just be like some random guy who's just every so often like Let let's put 20 years into one of these tracks and uh make another masterpiece <laughs> nice gotta put all Thank of my brain that. power into this yeah uh i think pickle has a habit of doing this and i think it's hilarious that it happens but maybe more so than any other artist i can name ever pickle has more times spilled over into so bad it's good territory <laughs> I think, <laughs> and I think he did it again. Like this is the beauty of pickle, honestly. This like every single song you can get ironic enjoyment out of, not enjoyment for for the music clearly, but just like how this alias came to be mm -hmm. and how any of these songs came to be, and just how bad you can make music. <laughs> and yet still have it blow up and get huge and be like the number one festival thing and all of that is hilarious to me yeah. I, I actually i'm in admiration of pickle for how often <laughs> they've been able to do that this is like the room of music <laughs> yeah uh, it's it's kind of ironic how this is i'm pretty sure this is the worst track we've covered so far but it's yet the one that we've had the most to talk about probably and yeah. we've just been having the most fun with all right and then moving on to another one that's probably on an equal tier it's it's definitely another very special oh one. yes oh, yes. we're on we're on oh, a no, no, throwbacks we're, we're, now no yeah, yeah we're in the throwbacks we are getting to my one and only suggestion ever <laughs> yeah this was you, this is you want it and it's you a beautiful suggestion. Hey, this is your fault. <laughs> Wait, yeah, Liz, do you want to do the honors of introducing it? Um, yeah. All right, go right um, ahead. It is Gucci Gang by Lil Pump. Turning three <laughs> years old. Turning three years old. Can you believe it has been three years? Doesn't feel like Gucci it's been Gang? three years. Three years since three we've years. been blessed by that masterpiece. Yeah. I'll let you go ahead. All right, I'll, I'll start off with the, uh, yeah, I mean, if Pickle is and like that are the ninth wonders of the world, this is definitely the 10th. It's, <laughs> I, I mentioned this when we were listening at VC, but it's, it's impressive how this track being barely two minutes long can feel more repetitive than songs I've heard that are like seven minutes. <laughs> like some of the Nomana tracks that, that we'll get into later that are like six, seven almost eight minutes <laughs> they still don't feel nearly as repetitive as this and honestly this has gotten to the point where 
I wouldn't say it's so bad it's good, but it's like so bad yet it's not necessarily like annoyingly bad. Like I can still appreciate how bad it is. Like I I don't get like actually like bothered by it anymore just because it's <laughs> it's that bad. And yeah, I guess my actual thoughts on it, I I don't like it, but it, it definitely is iconic. And even though it's it's definitely does not deserve to be as popular as it is. It is that popular, and I guess that's kind of what we're living with now. The true representation of today's society. So, uh, typically when I listen to, like, hip-hop, uh, I mostly, like, the hip-hop songs that stick out to me the most are ones that tell, like, a very enthralling story or have, like, like it's lyrically. Like, an example that I can think of off the top of my head is Walking in the Snow by Run the Jewels, which is this extremely sort of cutting-edge, dark, yet witty sort of perspective on systematic oppression that just has bar after bar of pure like lyrical like genius mm -hmm. but then the closest thing that this song tells the story is uh that one time in 2017 where dual pump got kicked off a WestJet plane for taking too much percocet <laughs> uh like i don't it's just like it's like the lyrics are bad you know that already fucking there's it's gucci gang like 20 times uh yeah and then the rest of it's just i fuck women i do drugs i spend money on chains yeah from, from, <laughs> yeah that's the whole song you've already heard just, it you don't even need to go and play it we just told it to yeah you. like it's just i'm so glad that even like the modern sort of cloud rap and trap scene has moved far from like monotonous slow fucking like derivative boring garbage like this Gucci Gang, yeah. All right, all, all I want to say is, compared to other rap, I don't think it's that bad. Like, it's definitely not a good song, but it's not the worst thing in the world. And you gotta give him some respect. You know, he was like 17 when this came out, so you gotta give him a little bit of respect. Can't wait till and we also, get to Jaren when he was 16, bro. And, 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 <laughs> and, and, and also, my lean costs more than your rent. I mean, that's true. <laughs> That is a line. I have it right on my computer on Genius.com. <laughs> All right, Miko, what do you think? I, I was, I was going to say like at first, I kind of appreciate how, I, I guess I'll say I just appreciate how little effort mm -hmm. and like care was just put into this, but yet it still managed to blow up. But I guess that's just like indicative of like the times of like soundcloud rap it's just you know a yeah. rep like basically just little pump repeating the same thing over and over again N pretty pretty boring instrumental nothing of substance there um i think at times though it can be fun to listen to it just it, it, it depends hmm. hey. give me just give me just one second i'll 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 be with you in one one moment. No you problem. Can cut this awkward silence out. I I I am beyond excited to hear your thoughts right, on this it's time to play, it's, it's time to play. Run, run up. up. <laughs> <laughs> be right back playing Run I, Up by Slushy. Ooh. I, let's just sing it instead. I unironically enjoy that song. So I, I mean, run you gotta give up. Run Up some credit. That yeah, the lyrics aren't good, but there's more going on than in Gucci Gang. That is yeah. correct. Yeah, that is like very correct. It, it does have better bars than Gucci Gang by like, Lil Pump. <laughs> like Gucci we, Gang makes Run Up look good. That's that's why, the power of. Why why is Gucci Gang like the bar we're setting? It, it for, used like, to be the Whales EP, yeah. but I think we're gonna have to start doing a like, shift there. Actually, this is this is something that I forgot to bring up. Is Wait, that are you talking about the Whales EP on Disciple? Yeah. Yes, the Krill the Game one. Uh, cause I listened to Destroyer EP like earlier this year. That is, that was fucking atrocious. Like I think okay, the highest yeah, score I, I gave that was that. like, I I I swear like the highest score I gave something was like a three. Yeah, th I think we're talking about the same thing here. It's a it's a round table EP, it's destroyer EP, it's got like destroyer steroids, brain damage. Like, how are you not gonna like this dude? Come on. But yeah. Like I was gonna mention uh right after we sort of derailed, I was gonna mention about Gucci Gang, because Run Up reminded me of this because the chorus of Run Up, motherfuckers wanna run up the block. It has such like like the most like it says nothing really, but it has such like a nice flow to it. While Gucci Gang is almost entirely in triplet flow, 
and just slow. Like it's, <laughs> it's almost hilariously slow for trap. Like it's, and it's in like this period where pretty much every sort of boring ass trap song was done in like triplet verses. <laughs> Anyways, welcome oh, back. Yeah, I'm. I've returned. Um, we didn't play run up while you were gone. I promise. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I could hear. I could hear you the entire time. I, I didn't go outside. No. Um, I think it is a miracle that Little Pump ever existed. Like Little Pump, I think it's an even bigger miracle that Little Pump ever had another hit. But I guess that's just the power of an insane Kanye. Um, oh yeah. But in, in any case, Gucci Gang's where it all started. Um, Wait, that was the, the origin meme story. Of, it was the meme of 2017 SoundCloud rap. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It, it, it was the representative of all, of all mumble rap. Just the entire thing. Obviously, a very iconic and influential song. Um, <laughs> And uh, of course, I'm being facetious about all of this, but there's really not much I can say about Gucci Gang that everyone in the entire world hasn't already said. Um, I mean, even the song itself is a review of itself. Like, I don't need to write a review of it. I just need to go Gucci Gang, Gucci Gang, Gucci Gang. And you already and then, know how good it is yes, or how and you not know. good it is. Yeah. So I thought, I thought instead of, you know, offering actual criticism, I'd just read you some of my favorite comments from the YouTube section. Uh, <laughs> Thank YouTube you. Comment section on the music video for Gucci Gang. All right. Lil Pump, the type of guy to lock himself in a motorcycle. <laughs> Lil Pump is the type of person to get out of the shower with his towel wrapped on his head. Bruh. Lil Pump, the type of guy who looks up and down before crossing the street. <laughs> Lil Pump is the type of guy who would be standing out in the sun to dry his sweat. Nice. Lil Pump, the type of guy to cancel his doctor appointment because he's sick. This is definitely Lil Pump. Lil Pump is the type of guy to cross the street and get hit by a boat. <laughs> Bruh. <laughs> and then my favorite one. This song saved my life. I was in a coma for four months in a hospital. The nurse turned the radio on and this song started to play. I got up and turned the radio off. Beautiful. Thank mm -hmm. you very much. Anyway. All right. You're welcome. Moving on. To the net, to the finally to the next throwback, we got out of the pickle uh, Gucci gang kind of rut finally, and <laughs> turning five He's years great. old is Crave by Tristam. <laughs> and now, <laughs> doing a complete 180 here, I think of all of the throwbacks we've covered so far, this one has probably hit me the most because I remember when Crave came out, and the fact that it's already half a decade old feels wild to me. And it's been one that I've been, you know, listening to and coming back to ever since it came out. So, yeah, it just feels kind of crazy to think that it's five years old and Tristram hasn't put out a track in like two years. But this definitely marked kind of a start of a, or, or around this period was when he started to shift kind of his artistic direction to kind of focus on more meaningful lyrics and kind of trying to veer away from what Monster Cat was usually known for at that time. And I think that this is a good mix of it because it still features some of, like, I love the production here. And I think that his vocals work very well here as well. So, you know, I, I love the amount of kind of variety that goes in there. And it's a meaningful song as well. So I have a whole lot of respect for this. And it's just, it, of all the ones we've uh, mentioned so far on this, uh, this podcast here, this one definitely feels the craziest of how old it's gotten already. So I was, I was thinking about this song today because it reminded me of something. But I, could, I couldn't tell what. I knew it was Monster Cat, but I could tell it reminded me of something. But what it reminds me of is Desert Star almost because oh, it's very fuck? much it's very much in sort of the similar bout of very M83 esque sort of heavy synth synth heavy synth pop. But that's, big that's but. the harshest that's the harshest piece of criticism <laughs> I've ever heard. You had you, you did not my hands, you did not let me finish. I, what I was going to say is that however, this track just it has it has the emotional complexity. It has the unique sound design. It has all of, like Desert Tristan's Star lyrics are good amazing. Somehow. Yeah, like this is very much Desert Star, but done in like the like Desert Star style synth pop, but done in like the best way possible. Like it's just such a beautiful song, and I just I need to listen to it more often. Quite honestly. Yeah, I I really really enjoy it. 
Uh, I really love the melody. I love the vocals. I, I really love everything about it. And, you know, it's unfortunate that Tristram barely makes music anymore. But, uh, yeah. I mean, at least Been we waiting can for the album it. since before you this came it. out. You delayed it again! <laughs> Yo, it's delayed, it's delayed. We can, uh, we can at Coming least appreciate out in 2050. The, the songs he's given us. So, yeah, I, I really enjoy it. I really enjoy it, Chris. <laughs> um, All right. Um, I actually, with this song, I kind of want to talk about something specific more than, like, the general song. But, um... Tristram's most recent song, Questions, I think has a similar problem that I have with Crave, and that is one word. Um, I think in Questions, the word baby, like when he says it, it just kind of... I'm not really sure exactly how I feel, just... I don't really particularly cringe, but it's just not something that I... I think the way he enunciates it is my biggest problem and i think that that's the same thing for me for when he says the word crave i it might just be a, a how like the word is and how little i hear it but i don't know those are like two examples um that i can think of that i'm not sure if anyone else has that same thought process but not i guess this is <laughs> yeah, <laughs> bro. Not right. not with this specific song, but I absolutely get what you're going for. Like, I I understand not I understand being like annoyed or irritated with someone's diction, just mm -hmm. the way they pronounce things. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, understand. I think we mentioned this a bit when we were talking about the Dylan Matthew and Grant track. Yeah, <clears throat> and I think that that as I guess I'll just kind of go over this song though. I do think. That, um, other than that, I think that Tristan puts in a great vocal performance, but, um, it might just be that I might not have any, like, nostalgia for the track or anything, because I, like, even though I did listen to old Monster Cat when I, like, first got into Monster Cat back in, like, 2016, I didn't listen to Crave for, uh, a really long time. Um, but, um, as far as, I do really like his vocal performance, but as far as, like, with Tristram's meaningful vocal performances, I think he really hits it on, like, the head with Devotion, um, mm -hmm. which is my favorite Tristram track, um, but I think that Crave was, like, a good start in moving towards that song. Mm -hmm. Uh, I was not a big fan, on the whole, uh, of... Tristram's more meaningful direction. Now, granted, it's better than what he was making in like 2011. Or 2012. <laughs> yeah. yeah. But that's not um, saying much. Yeah. But, I, you know, I think that trying to pump songs like that full of emotion kind of comes across as forced most of the time. However, Crave is one of the rare examples where Tristram was able to pull something off, which I don't think he did very often. Um, he, he pulled off a level of emotion that I I could actually connect with and not take it as completely forced. Hmm. And combine that with one of his cleanest productions of his whole discography, you have what is in contention, I mean, I haven't ranked it entirely, but it's in contention for my favorite Tristram track. Crave just hits me in a way that very few of his songs do. All right. Moving on to the next throwback on Tuesday, Seven Minutes Dead and Varian collaboration, Mirai Sekai, I hope it's pronounced somewhere around there, turning six years old. My thoughts on it, I mean, I know this is a very popular one, so I can't really say a whole lot that hasn't been said already, but the world building is fantastic, the production is really cool, and there's a whole lot of variation there. Uh, specifically, something that stood out to me when I was listening today that I hadn't really noticed before was how much I loved the uh, vocal chops in Neo Tokyo. I thought they were so smooth, and the whole thing really did kind of build up that kind of image that they were going for of like a futuristic city without it feeling like too forced or anything so yeah i think it's very very smooth and it's something very unique for the label i don't think we've 
got anything really like this, at least on the label. Yeah, other than like Pilot, maybe. Yeah. But uh, for context, for the longest time, this was my favorite EP on the label. It's just been recently <laughs> uh, toppled by uh, the Urka EP by Just a Gent. But mm -hmm. I've, I'm such a fan. Like normally, like it's very sort of. Um, 80s aesthetic Blade Runner -y synth wave sort of stuff, which I norm, which I normally would like just disregard as being very basic and generic and uninteresting. But I would say that this is probably like one of the most unique examples of sort of the style that I've actually heard ever, and by far my favorite variant of the style. I think well, it's uh, it's mostly like instrumental wise for the most part it's very much leaning into the seven minutes dead leading stuff seven minutes dead can make an extremely damn good synthwave bass like mm. it's something that i've noticed through the <clears throat> at least the first three um the first three movements of the suite i think is that all of them have like this really really smooth bass stab that just works so like freaking well but um yeah like as you mentioned the vocal chops in all the, across the places are in are amazing i think each each movement in its own has its own unique identity while still feeling as part of like this whole sort of journey and whatnot and while i did say that's more sort of seven minutes dead leaning i do think that variance production really shines a lot in sort of the ambient stretches like at the end of aeon metropolis the start of neo soul and the entirety of goodnight sequence uh, like her sort of like it's all like these sort of almost string-like MIDI sort of deals with like very reverb heavy percussion mm -hmm. that sort of sprinkles it throughout. But it's just like, oh, it's just amazing, especially for six <laughs> years old. Yeah. And I guess like the only other thing is that uh, Danica Nadeau's sort of choral, uncredited sort of choral singing at the end of Good or at Goodnight sequence is also like an amazing touch that just fits so well, I think. The one thing that I could say is that um, apparently, I'm just reading this from the Monster Cat Wiki, but during an interview, Varian had stated is that if the um, if the EP or any of the tracks were in any soundtrack to any movie or TV series, she would place Goodnight Sequence in Blade Runner, and it's like the best of emulating that very sort of it's almost like a very hard to describe aesthetic, but it's if you listen to like Vangelis' soundtrack, it's very sort of of that tone, very sort of like very sprinkled chime heavy and um, mm -hmm. i don't know i'm just gushing about blade runner now anyways mm -hmm. i love this ep to bits it's just such a well-crafted and well-rounded synthwave project uh to me um it's gonna be another instance where i just don't have much to say about it uh it's an enjoyable ep there's nothing bad about it uh you know it's a, it, it's, it's an enjoyable thing to listen to in the background or whatever there's nothing that just uh, blew me away though so you know it's pretty good it's a nice listen but i don't think it's for me all right yeah, this the, this EP is just so beautifully crafted. Every song has so many like little nuances that just make the listening experience so fun. The, it, it's just an amazing listen all the way through, and I think like you guys already hit the nail on the head for like basically every point on here. Just incredible EP. Mhm. Mm I'll agree with that. Um... You know, you, you've said about all the things that I would have said. Um, th there is a thing, though. Um, th at no point during the entirety of this EP do I find myself not enjoying myself. Like, it's, it's completely enjoyable all the way through. And that's obviously a very, very good thing. Mm -hmm. But then I also can't pick things out of it. Like, it... Maybe it's because it was all meant to to be in an EP mix and so it would all flow together but in my mind it flows together it's hard for me to differentiate between any of the stuff here and although I've gotten better at that in recent years it's still a, a, I would say the issue with the EP for me but uh, still I, I think it's uh, incredibly enjoyable a, a wonderful showcase of uh, both artists styles and, uh, yeah, I, uh, I, I really love it. All right. Uh, moving on to the next. Uh, we still have a few more throwbacks in here. Next one mm -hmm. uh, turned two years old on Wednesday. Absence of Association by Jaren. 
while Lil Pump was making Gucci Gang, Jaren was working on this. Who did it better? I don't know, it's, it's very competitive, you know, uh, it could go either way if you ask me. <laughs> but if I'm being serious here, yeah, this track is fantastic. We mentioned this uh, when we were talking about Escape, I know Kovac, you mentioned this, how when Jaren goes into a rock-leaning territory, that's where he really shines, and I know you brought this up, but I do think that this is a great example of that. There's so much emotion packed throughout here, and I think his vocals and the whole midsection is beautiful. And while this isn't one of my favorite Jaren tracks, that's not really saying much because his highs just hit so high for me, and I, I really do love this one as well. So yeah, a great track, and it's already two years old, wow. Yeah, yeah, as you mentioned, uh, I mentioned uh, when we were talking about his newest track, Escape, that yeah, like by far my favorite style of Jaren is his rock leaning stuff. And while the first half of this, of Absence of Association, is very much like run up a mill Jaren, it's very sort of loud and, um, and like sound wall heavy and compressed snare future bass. <clears throat> but uh, like that kind of stuff, it doesn't really appeal to me all that much. It never really has. But starting at around like a minute or so in, or I suppose like two minutes in, it's way well, the song's way longer than I thought it was. Jesus, um, which I guess is a good thing that it just sort of it feels a lot shorter than it actually is. Mm -hmm. But like starting about two minutes, in, it really sort of goes into Jaren's own vocals, and it starts really building into this like M83 before the Don Heals Us esque, like insanely climactic and. Just absolutely immersive and stunning sort of synth synth pop slash rock sort of deal and it's just like other than like maybe some mixing stuff which even then it aids in that comparison because it's just such like like it's just massive i suppose it's just like it's such like an, a massive immersive experience this like stunning hmm. Yeah, so I didn't discover Jaren until very recently. It would have been this year where I first uh, discovered Jaren. And I do like uh, almost all of his songs. Uh, but I do, uh, I do have the little bit opposite opinion of you, where uh, the first third of the song, I do really like uh, the classic Jaren. It's the second third of the song, where it's just kind of like the endless build-up, you know, that doesn't go anywhere, which just doesn't do that much for me. It's, it's a nice part of the song, but I do think it's... I do, I do think it's the worst part, but uh, then in the last uh, minute or so, 30 seconds, you get to the uh, just the acoustic guitar at the end, which I also very much enjoy. Mm -hmm. So uh, it's a really great track. I really love it. You guys definitely did cover like basically all the points of the song, but I I definitely feel like my least favorite part, <laughs> even though it's still incredible, is definitely the first drop of the song. It's very loud, Jaren. I definitely. Uh, consider it to be similar to something like um, what's the song name? These thoughts in my head, like yeah. it's just super loud, like just heavy, like everything, big basses, synths, and all that. And um, it obviously hits, but um, I feel like there wasn't enough like atmospheric bits at the front for me to like really get immersed in that. And that's where like the second half comes in. Jaren's vocals are just absolutely incredible and after his vocals fade and the buildup starts to like come in I just get chills all over and by the time the second drop hits with like that rock leaning stuff when there's like those huge drums but it's still you can tell like it's a Jaren song like that I think is um, why this is probably my favorite Jaren song and Obviously, again, that acoustic guitar at the end is just mm -hmm. absolutely beautiful. This is just, like, so, so well-crafted. Uh, I've said in the past, and this holds up, that uh, I'm not really as into Jaren as most of the other people in this server. Um, that holds up. Uh, for, his, for his stuff around, like, two years ago, especially, um... You, you you covered a lot of it. Uh, I think I feel the same way about uh, about the song as Kovac, which is that the first the first part it sounds like Grant Bowtie, and that is an indictment against it. 
Like, mm -hmm. seriously, fuck you, Grant. I hate you. Um, <laughs> it, it was bound to happen we, we, eventually. We, yeah, yeah, I was gonna say it at least once. Yeah. No, yeah, I got, I got that in. <laughs> um, no, yeah, I don't enjoy the first third of the song. But then the, the rest of it, it, it builds and it does this very, very good job of uh, climbing up to a climax. And then it, uh, it delivers on that build. Uh, I think largely it's a song that I can enjoy, uh, even if it's not um, one of my favorites like it is for a, a lot of people uh, here. All right. Then moving on to the next throwback, on that same day turning four years old, is the Game Over EP by Nomana. And this one, I hadn't actually heard any of the tracks beforehand, so if I was gonna have any nostalgia or anything, if, uh, you know, funny enough, one of the tracks is literally called Nostalgia Drive, but I didn't have nostalgia for it because I hadn't heard it before today. Overall, I thought a lot of these tracks were pretty decent, pretty solid, and but I didn't think I'd come back to a lot of them. Except there were there were two, um, I think it was Tell Me More and Over and Over, but I might be uh, mixing them up a little bit, but the two more progressive leaning ones I really enjoyed. And then the other exception to this is 10. <laughs> I didn't like 10 at all. But then the rest of the ones I thought were, were pretty decent, not good enough for me to come back to it, but I, I still enjoyed them to some degree. Yeah, this EP holds like a really big soft spot in my heart because it came out right <laughs> when sort of like the only artists in electronic music that i listened to were like no mana avici and dead mouse so this was like i played this a sh like so many times over the over the years and while i think it's not as like amazing as i thought it was i think especially 10 is a really weak track consider for especially for no mana standards but like overall it's just really it's just a really sort of nice enjoy it like there's not really like no amount of sound design isn't really at his peak yet it's but it's still very unique it's not video gamey but it's like digital mechanical mm -hmm. sort of like gritty not even like gritty but just like i guess like robotic i suppose but it's just like it's surprisingly such a unique touch for like progressive house stuff but for like specific tracks, uh, I absolutely love the like two minute long build up and tell me more into this pounding tech house drop. Or I assume it's tech house, I'm terrible with genres. <laughs> but it's just like, it has such like an emotional heavyweight to it for being like, are almost as like minimal as like the pickle song. <laughs> so <laughs> hilariously, but like, it just, it works so well in this. And then lethargy. <laughs> Um, I used to play this song like all the goddamn time, but I somehow never got sick of it. And then I had two friends who also got obsessed with this song, and they played it to hell and back, and I still didn't get sick of it. It's just like, I don't know, it just has never gotten old to me, despite like the hundreds of times I've probably heard this goddamn song. It's just like, I, yeah, it's just amazing. Overall, like, one, probably one of the most influential EPs for my music taste. All right, so this is the first time uh, I heard the EP as well, so I wouldn't have had any of the nostalgia. But uh, overall, I, I it didn't it didn't do much for me. There's definitely some good moments in each of the songs, except for uh, except for Tin. Um, <laughs> there's definitely some you know redeemable moments in each of the songs, but I just feel like they're short lived. Uh, so it kind of overall the quality didn't do much for me. Uh, but yeah, that's about it. No man, it does not make music for me. I heard the CP, and if I didn't hear it, my life would have been exactly the same. I I agree. Yeah. Um, no man has made many tracks that I have enjoyed, uh, but I never got to listen and uh, listening. I never got around to listening to uh, this EP, uh, just because I haven't gone back through mousetraps uh releases i probably should but anyway um i think largely this ep is some of his weaker work at least at least as far as i have heard from his entire discography um but there are definite standouts uh, i really like the progression in uh frozen fireworks 
I think I, I think it just uh, it's a very satisfying song to listen to. But I think my favorite song on the EP is Lethargy. Um, it's it's one that I uh, instantly clicked with and uh, knew that I would uh, I would also have it on repeat. I mean, not to annoy the hell out of Kovac, but apparently it never gets old for you. Yeah. All right. Now on to our last two, last stretch. Friday's throwbacks, turning one year old. We don't play by 12th Planet, Bandles, Barely Alive, Chibs, Dirty Phonics, Dodger Pusky, <laughs> Eliminate, Fox Stevenson, Infect, Mode Step, Murda, Myro, Olivers, Phase One, Samplifier, Terra Vita, Virtual Riot, featuring vocals from the one and only bleh, rapper, Virus Syndicate, which I think is... It's I, 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 I found out that that's actually more than one person and I didn't hey, even notice. Uh, do, you, do you think you can repeat that? I, I didn't catch it. <laughs> <laughs> no. Alright, so my thoughts on this, I... Even though I don't think it's amazing, and I do think that, like, the... I mean, I... It's not really the the purpose isn't really necessarily to be just like your average track like they want to showcase look it's a collab because they have the parts for when they say like each artist's name and then they do their little sound design thing except for Dodge and Fusky does something much greater but aside from that but actually I quite enjoy the drops I do think they kind of slap but obviously the whole flow of it is very odd to say the least but I I will say that it's one of the better ones, uh, better tracks on Disciple, but uh, then again, that's not saying a whole lot. So yeah, pretty alright track, but not amazing. Still cool to see, like, infinite amount of artists on this one. Uh, when I think of this track, like, this is probably the most, like, <clears throat> self congratulatory masturbatory song Disciple is, or, like, of, like, any EDM song that I've ever heard. Like, it's about, like, I think one thing that really stuck out to me is like right before both of the or yeah both of the drops there's like a 30 second to a minute long bit where it's just virus syndicate calling out all the producers yeah. names. they all do like mm -hmm. these like growls and i think well that's it's like a cool idea i couldn't help but think why can't these these growls are cool why can't they be in the drop instead mm. like it could have i don't know it could have had such a more unique flow to the song if there was all like these Instead of like having a minute long build up where it's just all of these back to back, if it they're all like mixed together into the drop, yeah, because it's very like, forced the way it is. Yeah. Other than that, I think uh, up virus syndicates verses are at at worst very sort of cringy and not doesn't work very well, and at best are just very like goofy and tongue in cheek and very stupid. Like um, mm -hmm. you can't dodge this. Just ask Fusky now who's barely alive is a standout to me just because of how <laughs> stupidly fun it is. But then like at the there's like the last minute is just like a straight up trap section that really, really did not need to be there. Mm -hmm. But the, the, <laughs> the very last part <laughs> Uh, let's not forget about the very last part where you know that sounds like it's like a youtube poop like oh yeah, yeah. they basically <laughs> created their own song within the song but it was to my i don't i don't necessarily want to say delight but certainly to my surprise that i found out they kept that in like the spotify version and like not just like yeah. the youtube thing like if you're actually streaming the song it's going to be this last part that's barely audible but if you turn your volume up he's just like steve stevenson, stevenson. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, this is where I get the joke of just eliminate yeah. from. It's a nice meme. Right, so, so yeah, it doesn't actually, take itself seriously. I actually yeah. do remember when I first listened to the song, and I just view it as a sort of average dubstep song. If it was, if it was just a normal average dubstep song, I would have been like, okay, you know, it's all right. But I kind of like it. It's kind of in a weird place where I like it for the idea. Like, I like the idea that, you know, 20 or so, you know, people came together and the the growls that you mentioned, they're kind of goofy, but I like the idea of it. So, which is why I guess I enjoy the song, but uh, I do agree that Virus Syndicate is normally, you know, not a very good rapper, but when he forces himself to make uh, rhymes about each of the producers, it, it's just not, not very great. <laughs> um... So overall, I, I actually like the song, but it's, it's definitely not anything mind-blowing. It's, it's alright. This song is 
incredibly gimmicky. I don't think anyone's going to deny yeah. that, but I think it no. I think it also has a bit of charm to it as well. Mm -hmm. Like it's definitely like a lot mm -hmm. of the like I think the best part of the song is actually like the part where like all the producers are like where like Virus Syndicate is calling out all the producers and they're doing their like signature stuff just because it's like wow we got all these artists on this song cool because like the drops are not particularly anything special it's mainly just like the cool part is just hey we got 20 people together and yeah. made a song um i i can't go through the drop and pick out like a lot of artists influence like i can do that in some parts of it but i I'm not gonna go through and be able to hear everyone on it, but it's some. I, I, I was gonna comment. It somehow sounds cohesive, and I think like Disciple is probably one of the only labels that you could like get 20 people together yeah. and like yeah. make a co and make a song that like sounds like the rest of the label on. Hmm. Um, I don't know. Maybe maybe Rushdown because I feel like yeah. their their stuff is like really similar as well, but um. Yeah. Oh, I also wanted to say, I'm not sure if anyone's noticed it, but the second drop reminds me a lot of Maxima by Pixel Terror. I'm not sure if anyone's picked up on that, but mm -hmm. I think they're sounding uh, I didn't pick up on that, but now that you mentioned that, it, it uh, makes me hate it. <laughs> <laughs> mm -hmm. Ouch. Uh, I think this entire thing was ill-conceived. Like, oh yeah, cool. You got, I, I believe they got over 20 people. To make a, a song. lot of people that's yeah. not a good idea i mean it's it's a good concept like ooh, cool lots of people making one piece of shit. um <laughs> but then you have it was never gonna turn out good like it can't you have 20 plus people working on it that is 20 plus different minds all with different ideas of what should go in a song like it's it's one of the least cohesive dubstep tracks that I've heard. I mean, it's not saying much considering the the rest of what Disciple releases, but I I just can't say that there's a single part of this song that I enjoy, and and especially like if you're gonna choose any vocalist to to be the through line between all of these other <laughs> artists, why would you choose Virus Syndicate? One of the most blatantly annoying rappers there is. All right, thank you, Liz. And now for our last one of this whole saga, we've been recording for nearly two hours here, but we're on oh. the final stretch. Turning three years old on that same day is Decoy World by Intercom, featuring vocals from Park Avenue. Uh, <clears throat> I, I know that the uh, response to this is a bit mixed, but personally, I really, really like it. I actually, you know, I heard it before it came out, and it sounded nostalgic for some reason. Like, even though it was, like, not even out yet. Like, the vocal chops or something, it was very reminiscent of, like, some of the stuff you'd hear from, like, 2015, 16 kind of Monster Cat. And it was cool to hear that style with, like, a, a new spin on it. And even though it doesn't really sound similar to anything else Intercom has put out, I really like it. I think the vocals are solid, and I think the drop has punch, and there's a whole lot of variety in there. So yeah, I'm, I'm really a fan of this one. Yeah, this is... I love this song a lot. It's, by without a doubt, my favorite Intercom song. It's, I think, within my top 10 songs on the label. It's just... I think it's just an amazing song to me. I think one of the, ma one of the main reasons why is that it does something that I'm always a fan of in pretty much everything that it does. It, it, it's also present in like Nub by Fowler, but it like each drop progressively gets more, or like, yeah, I guess drop gets progressively more sort of glitchier and mm -hmm. sort of like, I don't know, just sort of, it adds such like a, it adds such like a cool progression to it and just really fits in with sort of the very synth poppy glitchy energy that it already has. I think Park Avenue probably has my favorite vocal performance on the label with this. It's just his voice is such like an emotional energy to it that I I just love like I said love a lot because <laughs> every every track that we've talked about is either like an eight or higher or a four or lower for me. Like Jesus Christ. <laughs> Pickle haha. <laughs> yeah. Uh 
But that that's that's up there with the tens. <laughs> <laughs> it transcends right. ranking or ratings. It's just like why even bother giving it a number? It's just beyond that. Yeah. It uh, right. actually before that the pickle track goes so low that it goes it rebounds around, goes up to ten, goes back down, <laughs> does that loop like two or three times, and ends up at like one. It's like a sine wave. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But anyways, mm-hmm. Decoy World, it, yeah, it's just like, it's a beautiful track. I wish Intercom did more stuff like this when the person behind Intercom was still Intercom, but yeah. uh, what are you going to do? Like, they did, like, I guess the person, the new person behind it sort of did a follow-up to this called No Running, which sucks. Mm-hmm. It's really disappointing. But, but the no, person overall, behind this has one, in parentheses, the number one track that does sound kind of like this i don't think yeah, it's really I, as good but it's still cool yeah i've heard that one i forget the name of it right now but i i have heard that and i do also like that a lot but just this i just absolutely like adore this glitchy style of synth pop and this is one of the biggest examples of that mm-hmm. all right so going into this i didn't know what people's opinion about decor world was i honestly thought i had the unpopular opinion but i also really really love this song uh, nice. I'm pretty sure it was like I'm pretty sure it's like top five or top ten in uh, 2017 for me, but I just love the vocals. I love the drops. I love the uh, the piano riff. I guess you could call it throughout the entire song. <clears throat> it's just uh, very emotional for me. I really enjoy the song. So yeah. Um, when I was going through Monster Cat, um, I didn't put this song in my playlist, but this is. I think that this song is probably as close to you getting in there as you could without actually getting in there. Welcome! I was like mortified when I saw what time it was. I was like, holy shit. Yeah, for, for those of you guys who are not in the loop, uh, Wacko uh, was actually the person who suggested the Game Over EP, and I was kind of confused why he wasn't here, but it turns out that he, uh, he took a bit of a nap, and it went a little longer than he anticipated. Yeah, so about like five hours ago-ish, I was like, I really need to take a nap because I cannot focus whatsoever. I set a fucking alarm after like 30 minutes. Holy shit. Yo, your road's <laughs> wilding. <laughs> your road is wilding. Yeah, my road hates, is bad at me now. But anyway, yeah, I tried taking like a 30 minute nap. Guess who didn't hear the alarm at all? And shit. But at least you came in alarm. eventually. Yeah, I guess. <laughs> yeah, even you for the last. Uh, yeah, yeah. I'll still put your links in the in the description. Oh. And then it'll oh, be like hi, last everyone. time where Jake is like, "Why, why, why did you put Vegas's link in there? He doesn't show up." And he's like, <gasps> <laughs> "When he sees that, he's." Like, <laughs> <laughs> oh, all right, Miko. You, and then you can give your thoughts on uh, Decoy World as well because we're talking about that one. But uh, oh. Miko's going right now. Got all it. right, bye, Miko. <laughs> All right, nice, I, like two minutes talking with you. <laughs> yeah. Um, as far as decoy world goes, um, I think I definitely have to go back and listen to this track again because, like, this didn't make my playlist, but I can't. I can only think of positives for this track. Um, uh, my favorite part though is like right before the second drop when Park Avenue is like singing and he's got the like it starts at like the end i'm building this game using all my energy like right when he hits the end of like just to come back to life Mm -hmm. like that gives me shivers all over my body i think that he does an incredible job with the vocal performance on this song and the drops are both equally like just super satisfying to listen to Um, the beat really, you can get into it, um, the vocal chops throughout the drop are really nice, there's just some good nuances throughout the track, and, uh, definitely one that I'm gonna have to go back and give another listen. Alright. Um, Decoy World is, god, uh, I miss the old intercom, you know, the real intercom, um, because every single intercom release on monster cat is a hit for me um and decoy world is more of the same even even though it's a uh, very different uh as far as uh, the original intercom style um 
God, I love it. Park Avenue does the song a great service. Park Avenue is one of the few male vocalists that I think actually can project emotion into music. He's like, he's like a good Matt Van. And I think he really, really does the song a service. And it's not like the song would have needed it anyway, because that kind of, um, you know, stop starty synth pop is very, very well done. Uh, I absolutely love Decoy World, as is the case with any inter intercom track on Monster Cat, but uh, uh, absolutely one of my favorites. Awesome. All right, Wacko, everyone else, went. Oh. would you like to give us your thoughts? Uh, so Decoy World was a big like change in terms of how intercom is like producing, at least at the time. And it was honestly like a really, really pleasant thing to see because uh, it went from like way like heavier songs to like this nice little like synth pop track. And it was, I like it a lot overall. Like uh, the vocals really shine and I love like that first part, like right before the first drop. It's like kind of stuttery ish, mm -hmm. like with the, yeah, the kicks changing or something. But yeah, it's uh, I really like it overall, and it's sad that we won't really see Intercom make stuff like that again because well, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. But it was a great little side route that he went when he tried developing his alias. So. Oh yeah, and uh, did I hear that you recommended uh, like No Mana ZP? Oh or... yeah, I did. Yeah, do you want to talk about that? Oh, um. So the thing is, I actually never listened to all the tracks. <laughs> Do you be serious? <laughs> I just like, I just know like people like it, so I was like, oh, that was really fun. Yeah, amazing. But, uh, good stuff. <laughs> let me just, wait. I need to pull it up real quick. Um, I have just, two just songs added quick, from it. Yeah. Um, I mean, I like, I like, I really like over and over the most. I feel. Um, it's just good shit from him. <laughs> Nice. I feel so bad right yeah, now. Right. Like, I'm like, my, oh, this Saturday is not going well one. for me. Yeah, I guess, uh, eat the rich. All right. If nothing else, thank you guys so much for watching today's episode um, of the Castalog. I hope to see you guys next time.